Hi guys, this is Brian from The Verge, and we're here with uh, writer-director David Tui of the upcoming Riddick. Thanks for taking the time to sit down with us. Brian, hello. Hello, sir. Uh, and just real quick, uh, the restricted Red Band trailer just came out. There's a head gag everybody's going to watch. That is awesome. I just want to say that once again. It's it amazing. played well in H Hall. Played big in H Hall. <laughs> okay, yeah. cool. So now, so let's talk about you know about Riddick in general, right? It's been nine years since Chronicles came out. There's mm -hmm. always been talk about a new one coming up. You know, you've mentioned it. Vin's mentioned it. What made 2013 the time for it to actually come together? Well, we've been, uh, you know, for a while we didn't think it would, but slowly we heard this drumbeat from the fans of more Riddick, please. Right? I hear it, but Vin hears a lot because he's got that big ass Facebook page, right? Right. And so, you know, it was something that, well, look, I love the character in the worlds we create. Vin does too. And, and the fans were out there saying the same thing. So we wanted to um, pay them off. And, you know, to not do a third Riddick movie would have felt unfinished. It would have felt unfinished in terms of the story, the macro story we're trying to tell, and it would have been unsatisfying for us and our fans. Mm -hmm. So we said, we're going to do this, even if it's over the, you know, the dead body of uh, you know, some people. <laughs> so we did it as not a studio movie this time, but as an independent movie this time. And we raised our own money. I wrote this, this spec, uh, the, uh, the script on spec, and um, only when it was going right. as an independent movie does the studio step back in and say, well, okay, can we distribute it for you? you know? <laughs> We'd like to help. That and, might be and, good. Well, and that's actually a good place. That's a good relationship. Because it gives me total freedom on the set. You know, I had to write one pass of the script, one tweak, and then we were shooting. Um, and then uh, when it came to lock in the picture, I didn't have to focus group it to death. I didn't have mm -hmm. to homogenize my movie like that. I didn't have to turn it into milk. You know, homogenization is fine for milk, but bad right. for movies. <laughs> Didn't have to do any of that. I just like lock picture when I wanted to lock picture. I said, there's the cut, let's go. Cool. Now, were there things that you would have had to cut out? I mean, obviously there's, you know, I'm sure after judging that trailer, there's going to be some great, you know, violence. Are there, you know, thematic If we were PG-13 yeah. or? Uh, if we were PG-13, we, yeah, we'd have to sacrifice a lot. But one of the things by, by making it for less money this time, closer in budget to Pitch Black than Chronicles, it gives us the freedom to go R, it gives us the freedom to do whatever we damn well want. I want to talk about that because it is, you know, modestly budgeted compared, you know, to the, you know, to Chronicles and just yeah. other big movies. But you know, it's not skimping on scope at all. You know, how are you able to go and like, you know, bring both of those together on the smaller budget? Is it effects? Is it, you know, advances in technology? Yeah. It's still it's, effects have come down in price, but it's still effects can blow a budget real quick too. And I still have 850 visual effects shots in the movie, but it's just about, you know, care, not running to ILM to do your effects, not running to Wetter to do your effects, even though we all wish we could. Mm -hmm. It would be the easy way to go. I've got to go for the smaller companies that have talent and actually bring them up a step, you know? So, um, and some of the Montreal houses, the Canadian houses we lucked out with there. So it's a matter of like helping these guys, these effects houses, these smaller effects houses, taking them with the movie to the next level and saying that if you do this well and if you guys burn around the clock in this movie, you know, you can you can be stepping up for the bigs too, yeah. and they'll understand it and they'll embrace that. That's excellent. Yeah, that's one way to do it. And you shoot quick. I shot this quicker than Pitch Black. I shot this in 47 days. Now, how are you able to go and pull that off? Is there? I know you shot this film was shot digitally, correct? Yes. You had, did you shoot on the Alexa? Alexa, yeah. Okay. Did that did that help? Just because you can keep rolling and I have to call you know. I guess though you know I'm, it's not like a comedy show where you just say keep keep coming up with gags. Right. It's not that kind of speed. Uh, it's maybe you speed up the lighting process a little bit, um, and you streamline the post-production pipeline. But that really doesn't help me move fast so much faster on the set. What helps me move faster is that you know I go in with a short script. I go in with 106 pages, something like that. I'm not trying to shoot 120, 125, because I know I'm going to lose time anyway in the editing room. I'm always losing scenes, so I do better with a short script that I can embellish on the set. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, that's one way to keep it down. And actors who want who want to work, you know, actors show up on time, want to work. Do you see yourself shooting like a native IMAX if you had the budget, the time to go and do that in the future? You don't need to. You really don't need to. Um, they may argue with that, but I've seen the results, and the, and the quality holds up. The resolution holds up. What well, kind of harkens back to like, the film versus digital conversation at a certain point, almost? Um, in this film, you know, it's it definitely from what I've seen so far in the trailers, definitely feels grainy. It feels, you know, has has a real visceral aesthetic. Um, it's not what people think about in digital. Do you as a filmmaker, I mean, you feel like we're completely beyond the point of that's even a conversation? Are there are aesthetic differences between the two mediums? I'm just doing it because I know I have to move fast. I know my, 
I know I have 850 visual effect shots, so mm -hmm. I know that my post-production pipeline will be streamlined if I shoot digitally. Sure. So there's the call for me right there. Plus, Ari had just come out with the Alexa. It was a beautiful camera by all accounts. Uh, we could afford it. We could afford two or three camera bodies, so we jumped on it. We jumped on it. And my DP, who is a film guy, says, next show, Alexa. There you go. Yeah. Cool. I, I think the, um, the tide has turned on that. <laughs> Fair enough. I think uh, we're done, but thank you so much. It was a pleasure to meet you. You too. Yeah.